The Rewatchables is presented by Universal Orlando Resort. At Universal Orlando Resort, you'll find the supercharged vacation you've been looking for. Sounds like a good one for you, Shay. So yes. Right Go beyond the screen, behind the scenes, and jump into the action of your favorite films with an incredible lineup of rides, attractions, and entertainment. Plus, when you stay at a Universal Orlando hotel, the thrills of three amazing theme parks are outside your door. Hotel guests get exclusive benefits like access to a select theme park, an hour before scheduled opening. Wow. So wake up where the action is. Visit universalorlando.com and start planning your vacation. We're also brought to you by Villains. Season one is done. Yes, it is. The Shea Serrano. Thank God. His first podcast, finally. America wanted it. Check that out. Check out <laughs> Villains. Check out my podcast. Check out The Big Picture with Sean Fantasy. And if you haven't checked out The Fast and the Furious yet, I don't know what to tell you. I know that I live my life a quarter of a mile at a time. I know Shea Serrano does as well. That is a fact. The Fast and the Furious coming up right now. Let's go for a little ride. What the hell was that all about? A business deal that went sour. Plus, I made the mistake of sleeping with his sister. Fast and the Furious. All right, Bill Simmons is here. Shay Serrano is here. It went like this. I texted Shay <laughs> and I said, I want you to come to LA to do a couple rewatchables. And uh and one of them is the Fast and the Furious. Mm -hmm. And Shay just booked his flight. It was like, as I was talking, he's like, I'm in. I'm on a 6.30 flight. <laughs> I'm, I get in on Wednesday. And there we go. This uh, has been the lost, great, the Fast and the Furious movie out of all of them. This is the one that started it. This started one of the most successful movie franchises of all time. Not on as much as the other ones. No, and, and that's a shame. If you go from like from four on, it feels like fast and f when it when it really ballooned and blossomed. Right. Four, five, six, seven, eight is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. We love all of them. One is just an old school movie. It's set in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. It's got a bunch of different groups of people, people that weren't usually in movies a lot. Right. It has a young Vin Diesel. Really, before anybody knew who the hell he was, he had been in only a couple things. Paul Walker had been in a couple things, but this is this is what broke them. Uh, did you see this movie in the theater? I did. What was your reaction? My reaction was I went with Laramie and with my wife. We saw it at a, a small theater and I had the same reaction that everybody else who had just watched it had. We were in college. So it was a whole bunch of idiots. We get out of the theater, we get in the car and you're like, mum, mum, mum. Yeah, yeah. You're like in a little Ford Tempo, like a little shitty Ford Tempo, four cylinder. Yeah. Just revving it all the way up to 7,000 RPMs flying through the parking lot. I say flying like, 10 miles an hour. I I remember being angry that they had ripped off Point Break so blatantly mm -hmm. because um, Point Break had come out, I think maybe, I don't know, 10, 11 years before. And it was just an obvious Point Break with cars. Right. And then I kind of gave into it. I liked it. I didn't love it. I didn't really, really love it until uh, it started making the cable rounds. But I was like you. I remember where I saw it. I saw it in, <laughs> in Revere, okay. which is outside Boston. You had to get on the highway to drive back to my house. I lived in Charlestown and it was like a little five minute highway thing. Mm -hmm. And I got in my car and I was like a bat out of hell. You got to book That's it. That's a reaction. You got to book like, it. <laughs> <laughs> was your car a standard or automatic? At that point, I had an automatic. Okay. See, I had a standard. So oh, no, no. What's the one with the shift? Standard. My standard. bad. Yeah, yeah. I had the standard. I screwed up. <laughs> Two car guys. Yeah, on yeah the it was terrible. <laughs> standard. I had the stick shift. Yeah, I had the stick shift too. So when you're driving and you, you like, you obviously you don't have Nas in the car. So you just come off of the clutch and then you mash it down again and it sort of jumps forward. Yeah. Good enough. That's good enough Nas for me, baby. So there, cars have been a recurring theme in movies going back way back when. And in some cases, like Smoking the Bandit, which doesn't even really have a plot. It's like Burt Reynolds. <laughs> okay. He's in his car. He's got the truck behind him and they've got to like get across country. But um, this was the first one where the cars almost felt like as big of a character as oh, the characters. Sure. I don't remember this happening before in this specific way mm -mm. where it's like 
if you like, there's this whole street racing thing happening. I don't really understand this world. I'm being taken into it. Right. I want to know more. Because uh-huh. you always heard rumors. You'd be like, oh, yeah, I, you know, three in the morning, you hear people racing. You're like, right. oh, I wonder what that is. Yeah. But we, I'd never been taken in that world. What did you know about that world before this movie? I didn't know anything about it. We had a different kind of car culture in San Antonio. We were going slow. Like, that was the point yeah. there. There's a street called Military, Southwest Military. And like Sunday night, that's where everybody would go. When you got, you turn like 17, 18 years old. You would go and you would ride just up and down the street as slow as you could with everybody else and try and look cool. This one, I had never heard of any street racing stuff until I saw this movie. And then I was like, is this a real, is this, does this really exist? What's going on here? And then I found out they do it in Houston. Yeah. So we would like go down there and try to- Well, Houston must be amazing. I mean, there's just highways and (laughs) lanes, lanes after lane. LA, (laughs) LA has a whole scene there. I lived near Highland when I first moved here and- Highland's one of the most famous streets in the Hollywood LA area because it's just long and straight. You have mm-hmm. like LA, it's a grid system, but you figure it out after a while. It's like Highland, La Brea, um, Fairfax, La Cienega, it kind of goes down toward Beverly Hills. And Highland has a couple straightaways where it's like okay. from Melrose to Beverly, from Beverly to third, from third to six. There's really no stoplights and you can really fly. Mm-hmm. And that was the first time I had heard about this street racing thing in LA. Where mm-hmm. people would wait till three, three thirty in the morning, they would meet at like Melrose and they would just be like, All right, we're racing from Melrose to Wilshire right now. Right. But I never saw it. It was just like rumors. Yeah, I and never then, saw it in person. I am pretty sure you can't go over fifty miles an hour in LA from <laughs> seven o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock at night. Uh-huh. There's just no where are you gonna do it? <laughs> okay. There's just too much traffic. So right. you would have to do the three in the morning thing. Mm-hmm. So I'd always been fascinated by it. But um with this movie, it was a 1998 Vibe article about undercover street racing in New York City called Racer X. Uh-huh. So Vibe Magazine, huge win. Yeah, big Launches time. the whole I, Fast and Furious series. I always wondered if they, do they get money for that? Does the writer get money for that? How does that I work? I think they just, you buy, you buy the rights to the story and is you get it? the check. Okay. The lesson here is- Take a little less on the check and get like a, a, a shaving a, of a get point. A back end? Yeah. yeah, get a little, like, like a little <laughs> point, point two five back end point, and you would have been do, doing really well. So, Paul Walker, the late beloved Paul Walker, I was surprised by how much I love Paul Walker when we found out that he's, he's tragically passed away. I was like devastated. He's incredible. Um, he had wrapped up the skulls. Mm-hmm. He'd come off varsity Caleb blues Mandrake. and then the skulls. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who was he, he in, in Varsity Blues? I mean, not Varsity Blues. He's var- Varsity no. Blues. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was Lance Harbor. I'm getting him confused. Lance. He was Lance. Yeah. I'm getting him mixed up. It's it, Mallory has an issue with that movie because it it's basically Paul Walker is taking credit for for creating the RPO in that movie, I think. <laughs> or the or the or the five no, it's the five receiver, no yeah, running yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, we're gonna try something crazier. It's like pretty sure this exists already. Uh so then he did the skulls. The director of that movie, Rob Cohen, and the producer, Neil Moritz, who was on this podcast, actually, once upon a time, they asked Walker what he wanted to do next. Walker tells them- What does he say? My dream project is a mashup of Days of Thunder and Donnie Brasco. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So they file that away. They find this article about street racing, and they pitch it as a remake of Point Break set in LA with Walker's character playing a cop who infiltrates the illegal racing world. That's, Guess r- what Paul that's Walker right in says. the middle of the Venn diagram. Yeah. Paul Walker says, I'm in. Yeah. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> so we're off. <laughs> Seems like a really, it made me think like, why aren't more movies pitched as Point Break and blank? It should be. Like what would we, be like the what next one? With Die Hard, right? Yeah. So we get a whole series of- Die Hard and blank. Point Break, but with- so the, the key with Point Break, if nobody's seen it, we did a rewatchables about it. And if you haven't seen Point Break, how dare you? There's some, somebody, a group is doing something illegal, mm-hmm. but they're cool. You're kind of Super rooting cool. for them. <laughs> in a weird way, rooting for them to successfully commit the crimes. Mm-hmm. Somebody goes in to infiltrate the group, but gets sucked in. Yep. There's always the girl they fall for. The lead guy is such a cool guy that's almost like their buddy. They don't want to turn on him. Mm-hmm. And you have all these dynamics in play. And I don't understand why this isn't just a movie every four years with different right. things. Sports gambling should be the next one. Okay. A sports gambling ring that somebody infiltrates and then they they get in the boss <laughs> and they end up now they're fixing bets. And so 
They spent $38 million. It made $216 million. Yes. It spawned seven sequels and counting. They're making the ninth one, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah, oh, they, they, they made have, the ninth one. The Hobbs and Hobbs and Shaw. That's coming out this year. Yeah. But they have an actual Fast and Furious 9 that they yes. had to push back. And then they also have 10 scheduled as well. It's supposed to come like 20 and 21, something like that. How, how far do we push this franchise? Those are supposed to be the last two. But I think you just no, keep on going. It'll never ever. It. It'll never end. I think one after watching this, I hadn't seen this one in a couple of years. I'd seen it a million times or just not for a couple of years. The simplicity and lower stakes of it, I thought was really appealing. It made me think like that would almost be the way to kind of circle the series around. You kind of bring it back like older, yeah. older Dom Toretto. Mm-hmm. Now he's just running Toretto's market again. He's retired from the street <laughs> racing scene. He's done. He's out. Yeah, he He's got, got kids. He gets some sort of amnesty. Yeah, from and the then, government. then maybe something happens with that. I don't know. I don't. Right. Where do they take this franchise going forward? Yeah, though? you have space? to go. You have to go small state. You can't do space. Space can't is do ridiculous. Space. space is the last frontier. There are no roads in space. No. That, maybe that would be the thing. They build yeah. a racetrack on Mars, <laughs> like fucking Mario Kart. <laughs> they can race on Rainbow <laughs> Road. No, they. You have to go back. You have to go back. Small stakes. That's the only way to do it. But yeah, that's fun. He, we go back to the to the grocery store. We have Mia. She's there. Mia's back. Mia's available. Yeah, Mia's I think when Jordana available. Brewster got written out after Paul Walker died, she that was a tough one for her. Yeah, that was. She hard. was like, you know, I could be, I could be a single mom if yeah. you want to do Fast Nine. They're like, no, no, we're good. We're, yeah, your yeah, story's yeah. done. So Rotten Tomatoes, fifty three percent. I don't terrible. know what's wrong with that's these terrible. people. Roger Ebert, who's had a rough 2019 on the rewatchable so far with <laughs> okay. The Godfather and Old School, three stars yes. for The Fast and the Furious. Yes. Really liked it. So there you go. Uh, let's go through Dom's crew. Okay. I'm going to get to the categories in a second, but uh, I'm really fascinated by the cars. I'd never really done the full research on the cars before. You got the names and everything? Oh, yeah. Do you know if they're standard or automatic? Don't know that no. part. <laughs> <laughs> Dom has the custom built 1970 Dodge Charger yes. that comes out at the tail end. We have I have that at my house right now, a remote control version. You do? They they sold it at Target or Walmart or something. And it was for Christmas. I was out doing Christmas shopping. I'm just sort of grabbing everything and I saw that and I was like, I'm gonna get I know that my kids hate remote control cars. Yeah. I'm gonna get this for them <laughs> so I can have it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, you don't like this? All right, I'll take it. <laughs> so he inherited that from his dad or remained parked in the Toretto garage. Do you know what he daily drove? His daily car, his car of choice. It was Not a red a Mazda RX-7. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Letty, a true female hero, a true female action hero. Yeah. Letty's an all-timer. All-timer. Now Rushmore, she's probably on it. She's. That's a good, I'm going to save, I'm going to put that down for unanswerable questions later. Okay. We got to figure out the, the female action hero, Mount Rushmore. So at the time, Michelle Rodriguez- She'd basically been in that street fight, that boxing, female boxing movie. Remember yeah. that? Girl fight. Girl, girl fight. Girl fight. She's great. She was great in that movie. And that was kind of an ahead of its time movie. It was like, what? Female boxers? What? That's yeah, going to yeah, be yeah. a movie? And she was great in that. And she, it always she, seemed like she, it was something good was going to happen with her. She, she has such a gravity to her in that specific context. It was like, oh, we're going to... Like they met her and somebody said, oh, you, we should make a movie where you fight people. Right. Like she's, she's unbelievable. I have a list of some of the stuff that we've seen Letty do in the Fast and the Furious universe. And the first what's, one we see her, she what? knocks a guy out with a single punch when Han and- uh, Oh yeah, that's I mean, right. When Johnny and, and, uh, and Dom are fighting. Uh, let's see. She uses a harpoon gun to shoot a spear into an enemy's chest, knocking her out of the airplane. That's part six, I believe. Oh, I she, don't know when she learned how to use a harpoon, but- they, Maybe she took a class. Yeah, they took a whole bunch of night classes in between, like part four and five, <laughs> and they learned everything they needed to. She's the only person we see that can control Dom, tell him to do things, and he does them. She's the only one. She's wearing the pants in that relationship. Yeah. It feels like she she fucking remember she had the, the subway fight and she dove and tackled the one woman down the stairs. Like she just has she fought Ronda Rousey. She fought Ronda Rousey. It was either a draw or a slight split decision to Letty. I'm going split decision towards Letty. She recovered from amnesia. You got to go toward Letty because she had already beaten up a group of people. And True. then Rhonda came in there. She yeah. recovered from amnesia she, she really well. She recovered from I amnesia. Like. She's supposed to be dead. Yeah. She's done so much stuff. She's incredible in the movie. She drove a dark faded red 1997 Nissan 240 SX in this movie. Mia 
drove an aqua blue 1994 Acura Integra. Leon. We'll get Leon. to whatever happened Poor to Leon. Leon. Poor Leon. We'll get to him later. But he drove a yellow 1995 Nissan Skyline GTR R33. The polarizing Vince. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of lot of thoughts on Vince. He okay. drove a blue 1999. Vince Nis- gets a bad rap. Nissan Maxima. Yeah, I do think there's a revisionist Vince history. And then Brian drove a 95 Mitsubishi Eclipse GS and an orange 1995 Toyota Supra. Supra. That's that last car he gives them. Interesting that these are all, I don't know if this is, a, I don't know enough about street racing to know this, but all of those are kind of like second level race cars, right? You would assume like it'd be like Porsche and cars like that, but no. no. Oh, no, because you want to get Downtown the car LA. that you soup it all up. Yeah. That's what you're so trying you want to do. But that's what I realized. Yeah. That, like That actually makes a lot more sense than getting the already souped up car. Mm-hmm. So you buy the smaller scale car and then you throw $12,000 worth of stuff in it or whatever right. it is. So that's it. So the plot of this movie is basically somebody is pulling off these truck heists. Paul Walker goes undercover thinking it's Dom and his crew. Then he realizes maybe it's Johnny Tran and his crew. Right. And then he circles back. Oh, no. It's actually Dom and his crew. But at that point, he's in. He's buddies with them. He's had a corona with Vin Diesel. We get like 20 seconds where he thinks it's Hector's crew. We get that little tiny bit. Yeah, it was... <laughs> for, I forgot about that. I felt bad. That was like the one fake out where they tried to pull, where you're like, it's not. It's, don't do this. We know it's not y'all. All right, let's uh, let's get to the categories. Okay. This is great because most rewatchable scene, this movie is basically centered around the rewatchable scenes, and then it's just like you kind of recover, and then you get to the next rewatchable scene. The first one is the first big street race. This is what I, you can feel free to add. First big street race. Dom's incredible quarter of a mile at a time speech when he tells Paul Walker about his background. Mm-hmm. And I don't know whose idea it was to write in like some real dramatic acting for Vin Diesel. Right. But that person deserves a special he, he recognition of the Oscars. It. Yeah. He so you know it. what Vin Diesel needs is a monologue. <laughs> 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 Him flipping out at the street race when Johnny Tran thinks he sold him out to the car. I, I never knocked, knocked on anybody. anybody. Come on, let's go. I never knocked on nobody. I never knocked on nobody. I felt that. I was like, oh, he has he never, was so he has never told on anybody. You can say a lot of things about Dom Toretto. Don't call him a narc. No. The aborted truck hijacking with Vince dangling from the car. Mm-hmm. And then just the last 10 minutes are incredible. I don't know. Any any other rewatchable scene jumping out to you? You can honestly, you can pick any four minute stretch that you want and, and call it the most rewatchable scene. Which when I rewatch this, I mean I've seen this movie like, I don't know, we were talking about this before and 10, 15 times. I watch it all the time. It's on Netflix now. You can just put it on. You're always sort of picking out extra little things that happen in there. For me, the scene that I go back to the most, the one that I want to like. Let me rewind the movie and let me see this. After I've even saw another part, I keep coming back to his speech, but at, not the one in the garage, but the one after they have the first race when everybody's gathered around him and he's putting on a fucking show. He's walking around. He's making jokes with the people. He's got his arms out. He's looking at Brian. He's sort of jibbing and jabbing out. Like he's learning right here what Brian is sort of made of, Yeah, but also letting him know like, you need to understand who runs this shit. That for me is is the one. We we get to see the most amount of things that Vin Diesel can do as an actor. He hits all of them. That sounds like we should hear this. What are you smiling about? Dude, I almost had you. (laughs) You almost had me? You never had me. You never had your car. (laughs) Granny shifting, not double clutching like you should. You're lucky that 100 shot of Nas didn't blow the welds on the intake. Nice job. Almost had me. <laughs> Ask any racer, any real racer. It don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. So that was uh, Vin Diesel's big speech. I agree. Let's add that to the, uh, let's add, that's the sixth, I guess, nominee for this. Right. You know, Vin Diesel. It's a little like The Rock, where okay, he kind of belongs to everybody. Uh huh. You know, it's like 
he's biracial slash ethnic slash whatever. It's just like, like he just checks every box for some reason. Everybody's kind of in on him. Right. And I really feel like that's one of the reasons this movie has succeeded, not just because of him, but just in general. It was the first movie from an action standpoint that was big budget that I remember. It just felt like representation was a big part of the movie. Mm Mm-hmm. They were really like, everybody's in. It's, it, you have like Ja Rules in it. You have the Johnny <laughs> Tran gang. You have Hector. You have Vin Diesel. It's it just, they didn't make movies like this where where there was this much diversity. It was never important to Hollywood. And I really feel like that's one of the reasons it became such a huge franchise. When you go to see a Fast and Furious movie in the theater, it's diverse in the theater. Yeah, everybody loves it. And Vin Diesel is kind of the center of that. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, I don't even know what his background is. You know, I've read it like 10 times and I still don't know what it is. I just have no idea. Like if you found out he was like half Latino, would you be surprised? No, I would be ecstatic. (laughs) You get to claim him. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, we've been claiming him for a while. I think he's honorary at least. He's like Latino adjacent. If you've got brown (laughs) brown eyes and brown eyebrows, we're like, oh, you're part of the team. That's just how how we're going. And yeah, and he's the center of the movie. Everybody gets a little piece of him. He's unbelievably cool. And they write him in this way that makes him not just, he's not just a, like this emotionless, tough guy. Right. Like he's got a core. He's got this sort of, this code that he lives by and everybody can sort of understand it because it's only two things. You Obviously you don't tell on people and you take care of your family. That's it. That's all I'm concerned and about. And take care of your car. At all times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, if you're going to do a job, <laughs> Put some do a thoughts job. into your car. Yeah. Yeah, I think if you just look at the landscape of action movies in 2000, we were coming off this stretch, you know, Clint Eastwood, Charles Bronson. So Sly, that's the late 70s, Sly Stallone, 80s. Chuck Norris, Arnold Schwarzenegger. That's the 80s, yeah. Going all the Patrick Swayze. Now we head into the 90s, a little more Schwarzenegger. Stallone makes a comeback. Nick Cage comes in. He has his great run. It's always white dudes as the lead. Always. I don't remember other than Wesley Snipes and Pastor 57 a minority or even just a non-white person as the lead of a movie. I guess you could say Beverly Hills Cop, Eddie Murphy. Right. Um, Carl Weathers. Bruce Willis. Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess Carl Weathers, Action Jackson. There, Yeah, there, there are very few times when you can say a non-white guy was like the action. Is star. our hero. Yeah. Yeah, is the coolest guy in the movie. Yeah. Um, can I throw a, a thing out, out here? One of yeah. the reasons that, that he's so interesting to me in this particular role. So you're going through the list of like the arc of action movies. Yeah. If you're starting with with Chuck Norris and action, and you know all these guys. And then we get to the 80s as you mentioned with St- That's I think the like, steroids era basically. In the 80s alone Stallone and Schwarzenegger had 19 action movies between the two of them. Wow. 19, right? And that's not even counting the Bruce Willis and all the other That's not counting yeah. any those just those two guys. But so we get those two guys to show up and all of a sudden everything is like, we're just going to make these, these people as big as possible and as like tough as possible. That's all we're going to worry about. And then Bruce Willis shows up with Die Hard and Patrick Swayze and Roadhouse. And now we're like, okay, we're going to go away from the big guys, the like big brainless guys. And now we're going to small guys with like the philosophy degree and yeah. the guys who don't really want to be here. And then we get the Nick Cage and these guys. When we get to Vin in this role, this is the first time we saw a big guy doing the philosophical stuff. Hmm. And that sort of just brought everybody in because you, he could do anything you needed him to. He could give the speech about his dad, watching his dad die. Yeah. And he can also fucking body slam the rock and it's all believable at all times. And we're still not sure how tall he was. Still, He's somewhere between 5'4 and 6'4. That's all I know. <laughs> it's amorphous. It's all camera angles. and, and uh, There's no telling. Yeah, We don't a, know how tall he is. We don't know his race. And, and there's one other thing that he had that... Stallone had and Schwarzenegger had. Chuck Norris did not have. Swayze weirdly had. But it was the unintentional comedy. Okay. Where part of what made Schwarzenegger the biggest star in the world is people liked imitating his voice. Mm -hmm. I'll be back. And just like, it was just kind of him trying to act was funny. Just sometimes him walking was funny. You need a thing. And Stallone was the same thing. Stallone had like the side of his mouth has fallen, fallen off and- He's just completely over the top. And, uh, you know, he was sliced alone. It's in Cliffhanger. It's basically just him grunting for half the movie. Right. 
climbing him. <laughs> climbing And that hard. was fun. And Vin Diesel was immediately like cool, but I also like really like making fun of how he drew, how he drank a Corona. Uh-huh. And th- and just like his acting, it's like his acting's good, but it's also terrible. It, it was he was able terrible. to hit both. <laughs> I don't think it's terrible. I don't think it's terrible at all. I but the thing I like about about I Vin, love that you like Vin Diesel's acting. Listen, I feel like he thinks that maybe the Fast and the Furious is real. Like that's mm. how good of an actor he is to me. He really believes he's Dominic Toretto, and that's his family, and he has to protect Mia. Like Vin Diesel running is one of my favorite things. Wait, uh, yeah, not, he has not, a weird not run. the most coordinated he guy. He has a weird run. It's so tough. That, that happens in the Fast and the Furious when he like when he's running from the police. Yeah, and he does with his he like keeps his arms down really low and yeah. he doesn't move them for some reason. A weird run. The Steven weirdest goal style run. Yeah, the weirdest runs in recent action movie history are anytime Vin Diesel runs and then the girl in Taken. Oh yeah, when she sees I, her dad and she kind of runs in her, a, yeah, yeah, she's pretending to be younger than she is, and her arms are just yeah, flailing around. I don't know what she's doing there. Vin Diesel, not sure how coordinated he is. I yeah, asked he, that. No, co- he's very coordinated. He could dance. He can he, dance. He's, he's like a former background dancer, hmm. like a real dancer. So, what do we think is the most rewatchable? I'm going with the speech. The, the speech race. around. This is the one where he's telling him, "Ask any racer, any real racer." You win by an inch or win by a you mile. Almost had me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great. And I, I got to pick that scene because you get both Brian and Dom doing their stuff. Brian is remarkably charming in this role, but he's also like presenting himself as capable. He's it's a little great. Dion Waiters irrational confidence. I Brian. Don't, wait, don't tell me that you also think he's a bad actor as well. I didn't say Vin Diesel is a bad actor. I said. I really enjoy his acting. I'm also not sure he's a good actor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Paul Walker, good actor. Paul Walker's great. But in that one, he's definitely, he's trying to be the brash of a comer. Yeah. He's peacocking a I'm little good. bit. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's peacocking a little bit. I, uh, my favorite scene is the quarter mile of a time speech. I remember seeing it in the theater being like, I don't know if they're serious or not, but this is amazing. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Nothing else matters, not the mortgage, not the store, not my team and all their bullshit. For those 10 seconds or less, I'm free. Every time it's on TV, I, I, I always stick around for it. Right. I like that. It's I really like, touching. It's really touching. Which leads us to what's age the best. Um, I'm going to read the speech for you. Okay, give it to me. He show, he shows Brian the picture of his dad. They barely know each other. I mean, what have they hung out four times? A couple weeks now. For a couple weeks? Have couple they weeks. What, how much one on one time have they had? Well, they had yeah, they're 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 good friends at this point. Brian, they're good friends. They're good they're, friends. They're, yeah. Have they had one meal together? No, listen, if you build a car with a person, that's your friend. Okay. He goes, That's my dad. He was coming up in the pro stock circuit, last race of the season. He was coming into the final turn when a driver named Kenny Linder lapped his bumper and put him into the wall at 120 miles an hour. Fucking Kenny Linder, by the way. <laughs> I watched my father burn to death. But he says, he says, Fada. He doesn't say father. He, he says, says, I watched my father. I watched my father burn to death. I could still remember him screaming. The people who were there said, My father died. My father died long before the tanks blew. <laughs> they said it was me that was screaming. So basically, he hears the screaming, but it's his own it's his, scream. It's himself, yeah. Intense. That's very intense. That is a what's age that's, the best for me. That's good writing. It's good writing. That's really good writing. And then they cut to Paul Walker, who's just like kind of in awe of how great and bad this is at the same time. It's not bad. Stop saying it's bad. <laughs> it's very touching. It's very sincere. I love it. Uh, Brian versus Vince has aged the best for me. Great rivalry. I like in movies when somebody just immediately decides, I fucking hate you. Yes. And then they stick with it. They yes. never waver from it. You can save my life. I still hate you. Still hated him. Um, I never trusted him from the get-go. They have like a little love triangle thing with Mia. Mm-hmm. But Vince really sells it. Like I really feel like he might have hated Paul Walker in real life. He, yeah. He's another great actor. So yeah. Vince is the, uh, let's do Vince now. Because I think okay. Vince has aged the best. Great character. The perfect blend of like kind of handsome. I could see how he could pull off Jordana Brewster, but also like a scumbag. Right. Um, and really kind of evil. Yeah. But not too evil. Not too evil. But also like you can see why him and Vince might have stayed together, even though Vin, I'm sorry, Vin, even though Vin knows uh he's not a not a great guy. Well, 
Okay, what's the argument that he's not a great guy? Because everything he was saying was true. He was the first one. Like, this is a cop. This guy is clearly a cop. Look at his face. He's a cop. Oh, I like this. Revisionist history, actually. He called everything, Vin- everything Vince correct. Is, so you're in the Vince side the whole time. Yeah. The one, the one thing Vince does in the movie that you can't do that's aged poorly is he uses a homophobic slur. When yeah, right before they fight, 20 right? years ago. What right? can you do? So you can't, you can't have that. But everything else, he, he spots that he's a cop. Well, first of all, he, spot, he, he gets suspicious just because he's going to the Toretto's market every day. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck's going on with this guy? Yeah. Something Can't get is, tuna fish somewhere else? He sniffs it out immediately. He tries to tell everybody. Nobody listens to him. He goes so far as to follow Brian and bring Dom with him yeah. when they're breaking into to Hector. Sniff he's like, out. look, look what he's doing. This is cop behavior. You move like a cop. Very insightful on Vince's part. And everybody's just like, you're a fucking idiot, Vince, because you're wearing a... A mesh You're tank a dick. top. You're just jealous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the mesh tank top really held him back. He's got multiple, which is that thing I, I didn't realize until later. He has he wears two different mesh tank tops in this movie. Where does he rank on your mesh tank top, Mount Rushmore? It's him. <laughs> it's Bennett from Commando. <laughs> and those are the only two that that's I the, the, <laughs> the greatest ones of all time. <laughs> Another thing that's aged really well. The youth of the cast. Yes. It's just funny because we've been with them now. It's 2019. We've mm-hmm. been with these people for two solid decades. Right. Vin's definitely, you know, his head's gotten a little bigger. He's gotten a little older. Right. Just, he's bulked out a little bit. It's just fun to see all these people at a really young point in their career. Like Michelle Rodriguez looks like a, almost a kid in this movie. She looks like yeah. she's like 22. They she caught, looks great. They caught everybody at exactly the right yeah. time. Jordana Brewster looks great. Everybody looks great in this movie. Yeah. Another what's aged the best. Brian giving Don the keys at the end. That's wonderful. Did you ever notice how he holds the keys? No. He doesn't hold them like a normal person holds them where you push in between your thumb and forefinger yeah. on like the top of the key and the key sticking out. He holds it like, I don't even know how to describe it, but he holds it like that where one point is here, the other point is here. And he hands it to him like that. That's cool. That's like a cool thing. I wonder if he thought about that. Did, is that just how he always held keys? I think it was a character a, thing. I think he wanted, I think he thought Brian O'Connor would hold the keys like that. So it made him a great actor. It makes, I mean, it works for me. Street races. <laughs> okay. <laughs> in general, has aged really well. It's like, if there's a movie on and it's like, oh, this is a street race movie, I'm at least giving it a chance. Yeah, you give it a chance, but I would argue that that's age probably the worst. What do you mean? Well, what's the other good street racing movie? Like, it's not really about the street racing. Even the Fast and Furious franchise went away from street racing. After part fucking three. Well, how many times are they going to have a street race? You should do it every time if you're the Fast and the I Furious. like when the girl gets in between the two cars and waves the flag and then they zoom by her and I always think she's going to get accidentally crushed to death, but she, that never Somebody happens. has gotten- That is a ballsy move by the- Somebody's gotten crushed at one point the or M, What do we call that person? The MC? I don't know who that is. It's like it's like the uh, the ring girls in boxing crossed with the checkered flag and I don't, I don't know. That job needs a title. What else is age the best for you? The idea of family, they hammer it home. They do. The so seeds are planted in the first movie. Yeah, and you get you don't realize that they're doing it. I mean, they're talking about it. They're bare, you know they're sort of alluding to it. The one cop that Brian's talking to keeps bringing it up. You don't get the full sense until they're at the barbecue. But they're at the barbecue in the backyard. Everybody's sort of talking. Vince comes back after he stormed off. He's like, "I gotta eat." They, he gives Dom a kiss on that the back of the That was a borderline most rewatchable scene for me. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Jesse gives the says the prayer. And like they do a bunch of different little things and they're like, Jesse's the first one to reach for the food. So Dominic is like, oh, you're the first one to reach. You have to say grace. Everybody sort of respects it. Nobody gives him any shit about anything. They Leon helps him when he starts to, to stumble with the thing. Like, yeah. it's this really sweet, sweet moment. And then you just sort of, they build it out from there. After that, we get the dad speech and we get Jesse getting shot and you realize like, Oh shit, this is, this is crazy. But I, th- I'm going to go with that one because that's the one thing that they have stuck to the most in all of the movies. Like you, it, this is a familiar. Not familiar. Yeah. I'm going with uh Brian versus Vince. I like when there's like a really, really bitter rivalry between mm-hmm. two dudes in a movie. Right. And there's a girl kind of over here involved a little bit. Right. 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 I'm in, I'm in for that. And they stretched it out. Part. They stretched it out through like all the way through part five. 
Yeah. He still didn't like him when he showed up. You're in a fucking whole nother country and I still don't like you. I it's, respect you, but I don't like you. It would seem like he should have liked him after Brian single-handedly saved his life in the first saved movie. Saved his life. He's dangling from a truck. His arm's just hemorrhaging blood. That, but that's how down Vince was. Brian jumps in the car to, like, I, I mean, he risks his own life to save Vince. Didn't matter to Vince. If Vince had a choice right there, he would have rather died to, prove, have Brian to prove his him. point Right, this is a cop. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. What's age the worst? Jordana Brewster's driving is pretty rough. Is and it? I don't want to step on half ass internet research, but neither she or Michelle Rodriguez had driver's license before this movie. They had to do intensive driver training. And uh, the way she drives was never realistic to me. I never bought it. Why did Jesse flake at Race Wars? I never understood that. That's age the worst for me. What do you mean? Why did he flake? So he races his dad's car against Johnny Tran. Right. And then just loses his mind and drives away. Yeah, well, because he just lost his dad's car. That he, was the Johnny Trans is the head of the Asian car mafia. Yeah. He can't do, do that. He's the what was this thing called? Little Saigon or the Saigon yeah, Army, what, whatever it was called. I don't know what he was. I'm not fucking that with was, Johnny Tran. He's like, here, take my car, dude. Don't kill me. Yeah. We, Come well, on, we Jesse. Haven't, we haven't seen Johnny Tran do anything really at this point. We saw him like put the oil in the guy's mouth. They shot up Dom's car, but we haven't seen him commit any real crimes besides like hold a gun. So you were okay with that? I was okay. I was okay with him running away. Yeah. Because really? He, yeah. The reason he runs away is because he explains it right before I'm going to race. I'm going to win this car. Then me and my dad are both going to have a car when he gets out of prison. Like that's how we're going to connect. But he just lost his dad's car. Like that was his whole world. You know, he'd been working on it for so long. He let everybody down. He Stop making excuses mistakes. for him. Okay. I have probably unanswerable <laughs> questions later. Okay. I have. I have. Did Jesse deserve to die? I'll let you, no, I'll let you mull that one we over. No, no, we'll just mull okay. that over. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, poor Jesse. Vin's speech. He saw Linda, the guy who accidentally killed his dad. A week later, I had the wrench in my hand and I hit him, and I didn't mean to keep hitting him. But by the time I was done, I couldn't lift my arm. He's a janitor in elementary school. He has to take the bus to work. Then they banned me from the tracks for life. Mm -hmm. Kind of rough. I don't know if, did he have to like maim the guy? Yeah. Couldn't he have just beaten him into a coma, but he, he got out, he's fine. And he's now fine. he's been racing again. Does, does he have to be a janitor that takes the bus to work? No, you have that's to. A lot, that's a lot to put on Dom Toretto's plate. You have to put that in there because he has to, he's clearly struggling with this. He thinks about it all the time. It weighs on him. We don't see him again. We don't see him be violent until Johnny calls him a, you know, a narc. Yeah. But yeah, this is a thing that should be sitting in the back of his brain at all times. He needs to understand how bad he can be when he needs to be bad. And we also need to see him like struggling with that. It's got to be that. It's got to be pushed that far. He spent two years in prison. You think in prequel? I would love a prequel. Dom in prison? Dom in prison. Dom just running? Would be incredible. No street racing, but maybe he's just running the game like in foot there. races? <laughs> in, the, in the yard? No, I don't want to see that. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> the last thing, special effects at the end when they jump the tracks. And I, they in the research, they actually had to cut it so that it's like a green screen in the background. It's it's a little noticeable in 2019. For me- I think they'd have much better effects now. Yeah, for sure. The special effects part for me is in that first race when they hit the Nas and they're all flying and the camera like zooms in into the windshield and then out the back of the car. And you're like, wait a minute, you made that on a computer. Right. No, 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 no thanks. 2000 was tough. It was before CGI really got good, but before- the second era of CGI when we could have, <laughs> uh, what which was that, Fast 7? Mm -hmm. When they go through the two skyscrapers? Yeah, Fast 7. Yeah. Furious 7. So that was 2015. So it's 15 years later, 14 years later, we went. We go from, we have to like green screen them jump going over railroad tracks in front of a train mm -hmm. to them going through two skyscrapers in yeah. Dubai. Realistically. Yeah. You actually, I actually think they might've done that. It looks real. It 100% looks real. And they hit that second skyscraper. That was that was like a jaw dropping not, moment. Not to mention the CGI of Paul Walker, who had died like halfway through the movie, mm -hmm. and they somehow figured out how to do all the scenes. Which I have never read the right story of how they did that. I think it's incredible they that they were able to they pull used that his up. Brother, they used his brother and for backups, put, and they put it on him. You can see it. It's it's noticeable when you watch the beach scene. Yeah, 
And that's the most, that's the worst CGI. If you like pause it or you're like z- sort of zoom in on it, you can go like, oh, I, I can kind of see how they did that. Or when he pulls up in the car next to him, you can kind of see that. They did an incredible job though. Cause I had no idea that they did that until I read about it. Did we on. see Fast 7 together? No, I saw it with, I saw it with Rafe. I saw it with my wife. I saw, I saw it with, all of them with my wife. <laughs> all of them? I saw it with Rafe. I, we were at Grantland. Rafe and I think Mark Lasanti. And at the end, did you cry? It, it was it was fucking dusty. Okay, wait, but I, did you cry? Yes or no? Did not cry, but got emotional. Okay, it was like borderline, almost cried. Right, I cried. And we all kind of looked at each other, like, Whew. yeah, it was one of those. Like right. it was really, really, really. That was one of the most emotional endings. We got to do Fast Seven at some point. They, uh, they did a perfect job. What stage the worst that. for you? I, I guess I'll pick special effects. Everything else to me is fine yeah. in the movie. Maybe Brian's haircut, bad haircut for him. Wasn't great. No. Casting what ifs. This is really good. Is it? Actually, this is so good. We're going to take a quick break. Hey, Shay, you know how to stand out at your event for the right reasons? How's that? With the blacktux.com. They offer the kind of suits and tuxedo styles that would normally be wildly expensive to buy and you might only wear once. When was the last time you went to a wedding? Last year, huh. my sister's wedding. Oh, there you go. You could have gone the Black Tux. Rent them online, blow it out for your big one-time event. Take your style to the next level. With their free home try-on, you can see the fit and feel the quality of your suit months before your event. After ordering your suit, will arrive 14 days before your event. Could have been 14 days before your sister's wedding. <laughs> if anything is less than perfect, they will send you a replacement right away. Returns are simple. Just wear it, turn head, send it back three days after your event. Shipping is free both ways. You know you know who did this? Oh. Nephew Kyle. Did he? Went swimmingly to get twenty dollars off your first purchase. Oh no! To get twenty dollars off your purchase, period. Visit theblacktux.com and enter code rewatchables. That is theblacktux.com code rewatchables for twenty dollars off your first and next and second and third and eighth and twentieth <laughs> purchase. The Black Tux <laughs> premium rental suits and tuxedos delivered. All right, back with casting what ifs. The studio told the producers they would greenlight the film if they could get Timothy Oliphant to play Dom Toretto. Yikes. That's a bad move. Oliphant, who had starred in the previous year's car blockbuster action movie Gone in 60 Seconds, mm-hmm. declined the role. That sucks for him. That's Although it. I don't think that this becomes as big without him in there. I mean, with him in Well, there. for the reasons we discussed. Yeah, I think yeah. Vin Vin checked so many more boxes than Timothy Olyphant, who's right. just another white guy in an action movie. Right. Um, so Neil Moritz instead, uh, he suggested Vin Diesel and the rest Perfect of Perfect call. Who's coming off pitch black. Perfect call. One other one. The role of Mia was written for Elijah Dushku. She turned it down. I could see that. I could see that. Tough one. Yeah. She's in she's in five that's five jobs, basically. Cause yeah. Jordana Brewster's in one, four, five, six, seven. Mm-hmm. You're multimillionaire. Tough one. That's all I got for big uh, time. That's it. Because <laughs> Paul Walker, everything else was Paul Walker, like they did the movie for him. Is there a is there a person you would have liked to have seen in somebody else's place? From only the Fast and the Furious, from only the first one. From only the first one. The first I actually, one. I have a lot of problems with Jordana Brewster as the move, as the series goes along, but I actually thought she was pretty good in the first one. Yeah, she's great. I don't have any problems with her in any of the movies. Well, she can't act. That's a problem. I disagree. The, the, I disagree again. The lack of acting Bill. talent is a problem. I don't know. Bill, this movie has made over $5 billion. I think they're pretty good actors. You know who I, you know who I would have liked to have seen? And it, it's fun to like close your eyes and sort of pretend that this is the case, but the guy who plays Jesse... He's like a slightly less attractive version of Ryan Gosling. Let's slide Ryan Gosling in there and see what happens. That's interesting. So, yeah, you're right. They could have improved the Jesse part. Vince is perfect. I perfect. wouldn't touch Vince. You can't touch anybody else. And Vince. then Leon obviously didn't work because they wrote him out after I don't know the what first one. With poor Leon. Yeah, we're gonna get to that. Okay. Um, the Dion Waiters Award for biggest heat check. This is tough because it it has to be somebody who wasn't in the movie that much. Oh, it's, it's this is an easy category. Who do you have? But you got you have a list? No, tell who it's Ja Rule. No! Monica! It's a hundred percent Ja Rule. Monica! Like <laughs> his whole thing in the whole movie is he just wants to have a threesome. And that's it. And the, and that's his only part in the movie. And he doesn't get it. And then everybody laughs at him. 
and then he's out. The only other, other possibility I had was Johnny Tran. But I'm with you. I love Johnny. The cool thing about Ja Rule in this movie is that it's Ja Rule. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait a second, it's Ja Rule. And he was, it was a, also he was a big time star. Huge at the time. star. Him and DMX from the 98 to 03 range were way bigger than I think they get credit for now, especially DMX. But Ja oh, yeah. Rule too, those guys were like- Gigantic. That was a big deal to have him in this movie. Yeah, you were excited. When we went to the movie theater, I was excited to see Ja Rule. The ja Rule. In, oh, there's a, a Ja Rule scene in this yeah. movie. Yeah, 100%. he's good. All right, so he wins that. Half-Fast Internet Research. Throughout the filming, the movie had the working title, Redline. That's bad. That's like a Nick Cage Netflix action movie. It's a That's Timothy Oliphant oh, yeah, there Netflix you go. movie. <laughs> uh, you put him in there, you got to change the title. Redline refers in racing, obviously, to the maximum rate of speed of a car can go. And then the filmmakers settled on calling it the Fast and the Furious. Problem. Was, the title was owned by a boom movie director named Roger Corman. Okay. They made a trade. They traded the movie for some stock footage, the movie title for some stock footage owned by Universal Studios. Really? Almost as important of a trade as the Luka Doncic trade in retrospect. <laughs> it's, right, it's right up there. That's a big What's one. What's funny is I thought the title was bad when it came out. Now I love it. It was like yeah. the Fast and the Furious? What the fuck is this? You could be one or the other. Right. You can't be both. I don't understand how all of the ridiculous things that we've gotten in this series, we've never got one person to say the Fast and the Furious. Not once. That's It does break my- no, We need that to happen. One of my favorite action movie roles. You we have to say it. the title. <laughs> Vin could have said he, he could have drank a Corona. I forgot to do- uh, Oh, I, I actually, that's coming up. Vince could have drank the Corona where he tilts it too far. And then told Brian, what I like about you is you're fast and you're furious. No, I got got a better version. I got a better version. After they pull off the heist and he's doing the Salumi Familia toast. Yeah, I love the Salumi Familia. He just throws it in there. He like, to the fast and the furious. And then boom, in credits. That would have (laughs) worked. Should I start doing Salumi Familia when we have the Ringer holiday parties and stuff? You should speak as much Spanish as possible. Salumi Familia. You should just do that all the time. Even when it doesn't, Fit like somebody asks you how you're doing, or what you like. What do you want to drink when you're at the restaurant? And you just say that. I loved how by Fast Five, even people that were in Fast Two, Fast Three, and barely in Fast Four were part of Vin's extended Me Familia. Oh yeah, he's that's what I'm talking about. He's bringing you in. Yeah, if, you, if he touches you on the forehead, you're you're touched. For if life. you pass him for the barbecue life. sauce, you're in. You're in the family. Um, Dom Toretto's Southern California home. The address 1327 appears. That's not the actual address. The okay. real house is located at 724 East Kensington Road in Echo Park, blocks away from Dodger Stadium. Don't you have like millions of people? I who think you to and this? I might I take. Don't know if you can just no, throw it's it's known. It's a tour, it's <laughs> okay. a tourist place. Okay, okay. I think you and I might go there over the next. Are we going? 24 hours. I might. We might take a little field trip and I'm shoot in. a little Instagram video over there. Oh man, um, we got to recreate when Jesse gets shot. I'll be Jesse, (laughs) you'll be Vin crawling across the yard. I'll get the video crew working on that. (laughs) Key LA locations. This is for the uh, LA people. Dodger Stadium, Mm -hmm. which Brian tests his car in the opening scene. He's in the Dodger Stadium parking lot, which is is really cool if you've ever been there. Angelino Heights, Silver Lake, Echo Park, Little Saigon, and the San Bernardino International Airport, which was the venue for Race Wars. Right. I've lived here for 16 years. I had no idea there was a San Bernardino International Airport. I knew they had soccer tournaments because I've been to soccer tournaments. <laughs> the entire rig high scene was filmed on the Damagoni Parkway on the south side of San Jacinto, San Jacinto the San Jacinto Valley. I have no idea where that is. Uh, the producer, Neil Moritz, who made this movie happen, He's the bald asshole in the black Ferrari who drag races Brian and Dom. That's him? Yeah. He threw himself in the movie. He told us this on the podcast. Yeah. This is a good one. So Dom and Brian go to have lunch in Malibu on the Pacific Coast Highway. When Mm -hmm. they're driving along, they eat at Neptune's Net. Right. That was the same place where Lori Petty's character worked in Point Break. Really? Little homage. That's a good one. Little Neptune's net. I love net. little stuff like little, that. Little, little, little tip of the hat. I love to it. To Point Break for making it all happen. Oh, this was supposed to be in a casting what ifs. Colin Farrell was pushed for uh, the role of Dom Toretto at one point. Nah, no thanks. 
I do like I Colin do like Farrell. Carl Farrell. I do like him. He's very handsome. He's I, great. He's great in SWAT. I don't think the movie's as good, but it's interesting. No. It's an interesting like what if. If we put if we put him in here, then we have to put Vin Diesel in phone booth. <laughs> I would like, I the phone booth would have been better with Vin Diesel. Like Let me ask you a question. Yeah. When you were watching this the first time, yeah. they don't let you know, they don't hint that Brian is a cop until he gets pulled over by the police. Yeah. Did this did that surprise you? When I he got a, pulled over or that he was a cop? That he was a cop. No, I knew because I had read the stories that it was point break. So oh, I knew okay. he was undercover. I was yeah. I was I wish I had surprised. Known. Alternate ending was filmed. Tanner drops Brian off at the Toretto house where he encounters Mia packing, intending to move away. He reveals that he's resigned from the LAPD. He wants another chance. Mia tells him it's not going to be that simple. Brian tells her, I've got time. Mm -hmm. Not in the movie. And thank God. I like how it ended. Yeah, that's not a good one. During the race wars, the whole scene, real life drivers brought their cars to participate. Over 1,500 real life drivers in that scene. That's a lot of damn drivers. Did Vin Diesel and Michelle Rodriguez date off screen during the filming? God, I hope so. You bet they did. Jackpot, baby. Yeah, that happened. Jackpot. And then uh That should have been a bigger deal. That's that should have been like they would have had the coolest had kids. Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> this was we should have known about this. We this is why we need more minorities in media. This should have been on the cover of every magazine. Vin Diesel and Michelle Rodriguez. That kid would have been really cool and had a lot of attitude, but really cared about family. He would have been perfect. She would have been perfect. Whatever whatever kid comes out of those two, give me some stock. So in order to have the real actors behind the wheels of the cars going 80 to 100 miles an hour, they built a special rig, which was a high-powered truck with a long chassis in the back. And they'd have the stunt driver driving the high-speed truck and the actors were behind the wheel of the dummy car, like bouncing like they were driving fast. Right. Seems complicated. It does seem I think complicated. As, I think once we got into this decade, we just had the cameras in the car with the actors driving fast, would be my guess. Or CGI completely. Yeah. My favorite version of that is in Heat. I mean, not Heat, Ronan, when they're doing the car chase. Oh, Ronan's amazing. And they have... They have the actor in the same car as a person driving. It's just on the other side. Yeah. And if you watch... Robert De Niro's fucking terrified in the whole thing. He does not look cool at all for one single second. He is awful. I love that part. (laughs) It's the only time I've ever seen him not look cool. The uh, Apex Mountain. I don't feel like we got there with with the OGs of this movie, Vin Diesel, Paul Walker, and Michelle Rodriguez. You could talk me into Jordana Brewster because I do feel like she was the best in this movie of of all of them. Mm Mm-hmm. And you would have thought coming out of this movie, she was going to be maybe a bigger star than she ended up being. I don't know. The one person who was definitely Apex Mountain for was uh, Matt Schultz, who played Vince. Yes. Well, you could have told me Matt Schultz was going to go on to bigger and better things. I would have believed it in 2001. See, this is the thing. I knew we were going to talk about this category when, when, when you said, hey, let's do this. And I was trying to figure out a way. I can't separate any one movie from all the rest of them. You know what I'm saying? It's hard for me to do that. So in my head, this is clearly an Apex Mountain for, I think, for Paul Walker. I personally for Vin think Diesel. I think Fast Five is Apex Mountain for all of them. That that might work. Because Fast Five is the greatest movie of all time. <laughs> it's like Godfather <laughs> 2 and Fast Five. <laughs> okay. And uh it's also when they and we're gonna do Fast Five actually in a couple months, um, in April. Okay. But um Fast Five is when they just put all the jigsaw puzzle pieces together. Right. And it goes up nine levels mm-hmm. and that everything about it is just bigger, better, everything. Right. And it made a, a bajillion dollars and it became clear to everybody that this was just the new James Bond series. Mm-hmm. So I would vote for that for Apex Mode. I would say maybe Neil Moritz putting this together <laughs> off a Vibe article and creating a multi-billion right. dollar franchise. There's this your, might be his Apex Mode. There's your winner. There's your winner right there. I love watching when you watch, like if you go Fast Five and then the Fast and the Furious and you're like, holy shit, like they're stealing $100 million in Fast Five and they're stealing fucking DVD players in the first one. Right. Like that's an it's incredible- like 20 DVD that's players. A jump. The Soprano, I've been rewatching the Sopranos and that's like that too. They have whole heists of trucks with just DVD players. It feels super dated. I guess maybe that should have been in What's Age the Worst. D- Is the there DVD, a the DVD truck players? heist for DVD players and TV, <laughs> crappy TVs. <laughs> the Joey Pants Award 
giving out to the that guy or that girl from the movie. This is a no brainer. Ted Levine. Which he's, one's Ted Levine? He's Brian's boss, who also played Buffalo Bill in Silence of the Lambs and was the guy in Heat. Ted Levine. That's Buffalo Bill? Yeah. Are you serious? Sure, you big fat person. That's not Buffalo Bill. <laughs> you don't know what pain is, lady. Yeah, <laughs> it's Buffalo Bill. It's Ted Levine. I'm going, He's just, he has more weight on him. You didn't recognize him. I'm voting Hector. I love Hector in this movie. So Hector's a good one too, because I don't even know what his real name is. His real name is Noah. I mean, Noel. Noah. My cousin, Noah My what? nephew is Noah. Uh, let me see. Is that a weird last name? Googly Emmy. I don't know if he's Mexican or not, but he's Mexican. I got to say, I really like Hector. I love Hector. How can you not like Hector? The thing I like about Hector, the guy who plays him, in every role, he looks exactly the same. He does all, he does the same tricks, same haircut all the time. And they're all like, uh, training day is set in the same area. It's probably the same fucking guy. Yeah. It's got to be the same guy. Who who plays Hector now in 2019? Michael Pena. <laughs> <laughs> Michael I always Pena set you up for that joke. Is, is playing, anybody that you're going to ask me. He's, he's also playing Vince. <laughs> And Dom, it's going to be fucking Michael Pena out. The Saul Rubinick, they knew award for overacting. Nominees, uh, Ja Rule, although I, I would say his acting was actually also perfect. Oh my God. Ted Levine, Buffalo just, Bill. Just to clarify, Ja Rule, great actor. Vin Diesel, horrible actor. That's where we are in your- No. On your little Vin notepad. Diesel's a great, horrible actor. He's great <laughs> and horrible. <laughs> He's a good actor. The only Did you one- you find me guilty? Where Vin Diesel's like, a good actor. I'm with you. Okay, okay. He's fun to make fun of, though. He's not fun to make fun of. He's fun to pray to. Let me That's tell what you should do. Let me tell you about my father. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, the winner of this award is the police sergeant. Not Ted Levine, but the other guy, the black guy. Okay. He, he's dialing it up, and it's almost like a parody of all the police sergeants That's in exactly every action is. movie. Yeah. Let me tell you shit, Serrano, if we don't get this out of it. It's like, yeah. all right, dude. All That's right. exactly what yeah, he's doing. I've seen your character before. I'm really excited for this category. And I got to be honest, I don't know who wins. Would this movie have been better with Danny Trejo, Steve Buscemi, or Michael K. Williams? This movie is better. Well, you, you can't have Steve Buscemi in there. He's automatically He's out. out. He's disqualified. Because he looks like he's 60 years old. He could have been Jesse, though. He could have been Jesse's dad. <laughs> Jesse's yeah. dad getting There's out of prison. There's your one part. Yeah. You go, we get Danny that Danny Trejo versus Michael K. Williams is a tough one for this. Yeah. You could talk me into either. Because this movie kind of needs Michael K. Williams. Weirdly, other than Ja Rule, does not have a lot of uh, a lot of signature black people in it. Mm -hmm. But Danny Trejo feels like he should be in this movie. Yeah, he should absolutely be in this movie. He could have been working at Toretto's Market as like, yeah, just for one scene where it's he's got like the little paper hat on. Dom's uncle, but he just got out. He's trying to rebuild his life. But you know, in like Fast Four, he's gonna become part of Me Familia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I vote for Trejo. <laughs> Picking nits. Why did Brian risk sneaking into Dom's garage? That whole thing. That was so fucking risky. He knew Vince was side-eyeing him at all times. And what oh, was he trying to do with that? When he was sneaking into, he was sneaking into Hector's garage. I mean, garage. Uh, Hector's garage. Yeah. Well, he was trying to see if they were the, the people who were hijacking all the 18-wheelers. Because he came in and he ordered the three. He's, he's like, risky. I need, he was doing well. I need three of everything. Yeah. I mean, but he only, he only had a little bit of time left. At that point, he like thing told him you get thirty six hours or something. Maybe don't make sure you're getting trailed by Dom and uh, and Vince. Yeah, he was you're not a that cop. Great, he was not that great of a cop. You're a cop, like you don't you don't know somebody's following you. We've not had any good cops in the movie in the Fast and the Furious franchise. No. It's it's basically the the franchise hates cops. None of them. Even even Hobbs, the Rock's character. Well, Hobbs is a terrible cop. Yeah. He, he like screws everything screws up. Screws everything up. And then in Fast Five, completely screws it up. Takes the wrong safe. He he took the wrong safe. He got his team killed. <laughs> he got, uh, he he got, got his whole team killed. By Vin Diesel. Yeah, Vin Diesel beat him up. He's seven inches shorter. He let, what's her name uh, from Furious 6 or Fast and Furious 6? The, well, the, Jason like, Statham. What about when uh, he, he, he basically gets his ass kicked in his own police office? Yeah. He, by Jason he, Statham. He, he took a lot of losses. In that thing. You could tell he was not that great of a cop because they were like, hey, you got to catch this guy. You've got to catch Deckard or Owen Shaw. And he's like, oh, shit. Let me call a bunch of criminals to help yeah, me. Like, <laughs> he didn't even try to get him by himself. <laughs> let me call some criminals on the lamp. <laughs> Hobbs, terrible cop. Brian, also terrible cop. Another nitpick. Why did Brian tell Mia he was a cop? 
He needed her to tell him what was going on. There was no other way. They were leaving. He had he only had a couple hours left. Maybe let the case just kind of go at that point, other than break your undercover thing. Yeah, I mean, I think that's more a problem with the FBI. They should have been on it. They should have been trailing. Not them. great. Another nitpick. The end of this movie, they're they're basically flying around Echo Park. It's mm-hmm. the the hills. They're going down hills, up hills. Right. Nobody has ever gone more than 35 miles an hour in Echo Park. <laughs> okay. I'm just telling you now. I got to take your word Craig, on Craig, have you one. been to Echo Park? I have. Have you ever gone over 35 miles an hour in no, Echo Park? No. Have you ever seen anybody speeding in Echo Park No, ever? it's like going up a roller coaster every hill. Yeah. You can't do that. And it's also like you go down the hill, you might run over a four-year-old <laughs> kid. Like there's just a lot of obstacles to ever going fast. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to point that out. Best quote. Wait, I have a nit, a nitpick. Oh, give me a nitpick. Shouldn't Dom and, and everybody, shouldn't they have been rich? They they talk about they've stolen like six million dollars. Well, worth they're of stealing stuff. DVDs. I'm, I don't but, know how much money they could have. No, but out. six million dollars worth of DVDs. Even if you sell them at half price, two thousand and one DVD players were selling. Well, I think Toretto's market was in the hole. Is that what a it lot is? of that movie? <laughs> a lot of tuna to, just <laughs> wasted hundreds of thousands of dollars on tuna. <laughs> Dom's sandwich player just was never working. He got into soups at one point. That didn't work either. Okay. Best quote: You can have any brew you want. As long as it's a corona. I just want to say for the kids out there looking for high school yearbook quotes, feel free to maybe consider that one. <laughs> it's really good. Okay. <laughs> He's basically saying you can only have a corona, but phrases it like there's some sort of choice involved, but there's not. Right. I love that one. You know, Edwin happens to know a few things. And one of the things Edwin knows is it's not how you stand by your car. It's how you race your car. You better learn that. That's just a great quote. That okay. could also be a high school yearbook quote. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Nothing else matters. Not the mortgage, not the store, not my team and all their bullshit. For those 10 seconds or less, I'm free. Mm-hmm. I think that's the best quote of the movie. That's, I don't know if you agree or disagree. I think that that one has to win because they that's the one that they've like pulled into the rest of the the series. Like yeah. That's how they end part seven Yeah, when, when Paul Walker is gone. They go back to that one Hold on, line. Hold on, I'm gonna get choked up if you start talking yeah. about this again. <laughs> they go back to that to that one line, and it's like, you know, that's why I knew you were my brother because you did the same. Like, it's probably gotta be that one. I, I'm, I, the only other one that's a real contender is to ask any racer, any real racer, going by an intro mile. Like, yeah, those are the two I think. Let's talk quickly about Vudu. It's a streaming service you can watch on all your favorite devices, stream over 6,000 titles for free, or choose from over 150,000 titles to rent or buy in up to 4K quality from the latest Hollywood blockbusters to independent cinema. Shay, true or false? I, over the break, they had a bundle sale, mm-hmm. and they had all eight Fast and Furious true. movies Whatever in you're gonna 4K say is true. for $34.99 for all eight. That's a steal. I honestly felt like I was stealing. After I bought it, I thought I was going to go to jail. I was you like, I'm stealing. Have. I've, I've. That's that's less than five dollars a movie. I have 16 hours of Fast and Furious at mm-hmm. my disposal. Mm-hmm. The Voodoo app is great. Head over to voodoo.com slash rewatchables to sign up and start watching today. V U D U dot com slash rewatchables. Relatively new category for 2019. Could this be remade as a 10 episode Netflix show? Uh, yeah, they're doing an animated series. On Netflix, it's like animated uh, series. Yeah, the Fast and the Furious, like spy something, spy cars, or I don't know, some bullshit like that. But they're, but they're definitely. definitely I think you could talk me into basically the 2001 version of this. This movie we're talking about now, stretched over ten episodes. But I'm really in the LA. I'm in a deep LA. Mm -hmm. I'm in a street racing scenes. I'm around characters. All the like. I mean, I, there's a little more of a gang element, like a training day when Ethan Hawke goes to that. I want, I want people like that. Right. I want to be in that world. Okay. It's seedy. It's a little dangerous. My guys know how to navigate it, but they might get killed at every time. There's a race wars, you know, looming at the end of the movie. But now Johnny Tran's involved. I really do think that could have worked as a show. Probably. You can. I think you can get 10, 12 episodes. Out of that one. Because I don't think The Purge worked as a show, and I thought it was going to. Right. So I don't, I don't want to say it's a, it's a lock, but I think you'd really have to dive. There isn't a show right now that really dives into that side of LA in a way that I've been satisfied with, and I think there's a way to do that. I thought of another 
another line that we should have put in the quotes, the best what line. What is it? It's a Brian one. It's right before they race, right before him and Dom race for the first time. Yeah. And he's telling him, you know, it's $2,000 entry. And he's like, I don't have the money, but, you know, I'll do this. And if I win, whatever, I get the respect and blah, blah, blah. And Dominic sort of makes fun of him about it, about saying the respect line. And then Brian says back to him, well, to some people, that's more important. And I think right there in the movie is the first time we get like, oh, I think you you and I might get along here. These dudes are on the same page. And they do it later on too. Yeah. They do it in part eight. It's like a quick little thing after Dom has that first street race where he races fucking backwards. Yeah. And when they get out, he gives the guy his car back. And he's like, you keep the car. I want the respect, you know. And like, I don't know. I'm he gonna, loves respect, I love, man. I love it. I love Dominic Toretto. <laughs> God damn, I love Dominic Toretto. One of the Toretto. great characters of all time. Brian O'Connor, give me all of them. Oh, I forgot a nitpick while we're here. Okay. You would never really, from where they live in downtown LA, there would be no reason for them ever to go to lunch at Neptune's Net. Okay. I mean, that is a hike. Is You're it? going all the way down PCH. It's it's fine. It's not really worth the ride, but I think they had to squeeze it in because it was the point. Is it still open? Oh, yeah. And you've never taken me there? I've been to LA 20 times, not once. It's really gone. far. <laughs> it was like an all-day trip. Do you, um, oh, what was we can name? go there though. Well, I'll take you there. Okay. We'll go. One of these times when you come, we'll Remember, go. Remember uh, uh, Mike from Grantland? Yeah. Oh, so Mike is a real friend because I was like, Mike, where are the white men can't jump basketball courts? He's like, they're an hour away. You want to go? And he just fucking took me. But you won't even take me to get shrimp? I want some shrimp at Neptune's. All right, we'll do it. I promise you. <laughs> I'm also going to take you to Toretto's Market, which brings us to probably unanswerable questions. I got answers for all of these. Whatever sure. happened at Toretto's Market? So by Fast Five, they're stealing hundreds of millions of dollars from Brazil. Mm -hmm. Who's making the roast beef and buying the tuna at Toretto's Market? <laughs> Danny, Did they just let Danny it go? Danny Trejo. Is Danny Michael Trejo? Williams, is yeah. Uncle Danny's yeah. like working it? <laughs> Did they let it go? Did Dom like just casually let the lease expire and kind of pushed it out? I mean, it'd been in the family for decades. Yeah, the government repoed that. You think so? They got so? that, they got the house, they got all the Or cars. they sold it to fund maybe the next... Uh, Toyota Camry could've, that they, they could have done that. Mm. Did Jesse deserve to die? I teased this one earlier. <laughs> no. Don't race Johnny Tran at Race Wars and then just drive away. You're going to get shot. It's he, happening. He didn't know he was racing Johnny Tran until the window came down because Brian didn't even know. He, he runs up to him. He's like, don't do this. Who are you racing? The window goes down and he's like, oh, fuck. He was stuck after that. You can't back out. At that point, no. How about he this? Don't when you're an ADD computer guy, don't don't uh, race at race wars. He There's didn't deserve an idea. to die. Johnny Johnny super overreacted, right there. Like you just fucking wait. I'll give you your car. Give me like two hours. You just gave me a whole speech about respect. Johnny Tran wants his respect at no. race wars. I get my car if no, I beat that's you. That's why you can't respect Johnny Tran because he went too far. He fucking shot up a how he tried to kill. What was that? Four people. Because he didn't get uh, the little Volvo or whatever that was. Well, he was a hot head. <laughs> I had this written down before we talked about it, but it's worth mentioning that I already had written this down. Okay. Was Brian O'Connor a bad undercover cop or an atrocious undercover cop? He was really bad. Was he, he was atrocious really... or bad? I, I wouldn't go so far as to say atrocious. I would say bad because at least he taught himself how to drive at a really high level at Dodger Stadium. Yeah, he was like, he was getting after it. Yeah, okay. He deserves that. This is brought up by Craig, the producer, but I did have it in my notes. Did they have a deal with Corona? No. Oh, the, like the actual franchise, the movie franchise? Yeah. No, I read a story about that on the ringer.com. Matter of fact, by Andrew. You're right. We yeah. wrote about that. <laughs> <laughs> During when we had the Fast and the Furious yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah. It was all, <laughs> it was all gratis. Letty Mount Rushmore. So here's what we're going to do. We have a Facebook group for the rewatchables that uh, people like posting stuff. Come up with uh, your Mount Rushmore for female action heroes. All I know is Letty's on it. Letty's on Letty it. Letty did some amazing work. It starts with Letty for me. It, I don't know yeah. who else is on it, but Letty's on okay, it. Okay, she's got to be on there. So you need three more spots. Okay, give me Furiosa, Mad Max Fury Road. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a really good one. That's give, two. Can we use two Charlize What about- uh, Because Atomic Blonde. No. Wouldn't, she can't be on twice. You can only Rushmore. have one. Okay. The actress themselves can only be on once. Okay. I was thinking uh, Sigourney Weaver in the second Aliens movie. Aliens is that 2. An, is that an action movie or a sci-fi movie? We I, never really solved that I think one. we can blur the lines enough there. Like if we can call Total Recall an action movie, we can call Aliens 2 
And then that's uh, that's Linda when she got the big gun and the overalls. It's great. And it was also like really the first time a female character had been like a badass like that in an action movie. Yeah. And then the other one for me is is a no brainer: Terminator Two, Linda Hamilton. Yeah, for sure. There the fucking Ray Bans. We filled it in. She looks great. She was in. It was the first time I remember an actress like with guns. Like where it was like she's doing oh. the pull up. Yeah, it's like oh shit, you worked out for this yeah, movie. It was like before it was cool to do that. So I love. That she's in the hospital. She's all chiseled up. She's been preparing for this moment since the first one. Yeah. And then he shows up and she panics. She just yeah. falls on the floor. She's like, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my. It was like like yeah. the Halloween remake. Same <laughs> yeah, thing. Exactly. I've had 40 years to plan this. You're in my house. Oh shit. <laughs> what do I do? And then uh, finally, unanswerable. And I actually tried to figure out what happened here and I could not. What happened to Leon? He, he just, was part of La Familia. He just didn't make it. Salud Leon, La Familia. Listen, but Leon's I, just out? Okay, I just thought about it right now. I, this is exactly what happened with Leon. Everybody in the crew had like a specific kind of job, right? Yeah. Dom's the leader. Vince is the muscle. So it's like a basketball team. James yeah. Harden is Dom. Exactly. You go, go all the way through. Letty's second in command. Vince is Clint Capella. Oversees everything. Letty's, Letty's great. I, I remember, Letty's Eric uh, Gordon. Yeah. No, Letty is not Eric Gordon. <laughs> Eric Gordon last year, not this year. Letty is great. Letty is is good because she's like able to make every other character better than they are. Vince is PJ Tucker. We this is going way sideways. <laughs> this is what, what this is. No, listen. Every person in there had a job. Jesse was the tech guy. Yep. The only job Vince has in the movie is the scanner listener. That's all he does. Vince right? or Jesse? I mean, I'm sorry. Jesse. No, Leon. 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 The only the only job Leon has in the movie is the scanner. He like waits on the sideline when they're racing in the beginning. He tells, oh, move on, pizza boy. Like, whatever. He's on the scanner. When they're racing at the very end, when Vince gets caught up, he's the only car that doesn't try to come up and help. He's way in the back, just listening on the scanner for some reason. See, I feel like that's when he lost his job in Me Familia. Yeah. Yeah. He was like, Dom took stock of everything. Everyone's trying to save Vince, but but Leon's just like, hey, man, hold on. I'm back here listening to the scanner. Dom's car gets the front tire blown out. Yeah. He's still chasing after him. Letty gets, her car gets shot. She crashes. He should have been like, Dom, you go with Letty. Your car doesn't work. I'll take care of this. Dom's like, you go get Letty. Oh, sure, sure, sure. I'll do that. I'll do that part. And then he goes and gets her. Like he was the most dispensable character. So Leon so gets exposed yeah. when things go wrong. Yeah. And they dumped him. He wouldn't, he wasn't holding up his end. Doesn't sound like me familiar to me. No. He could, that's it. He's just out. Yeah. You're maybe out. they, maybe they put him in Toretto's market. There Maybe they is. reassigned him. He's like, that's- they pulled him sometimes in to listen to the scanner, but other times he's just cutting roast beef. Yeah, he's watching the other Making two, the, tuna. the other group fucking globe trot and steal billions of dollars. We're low and on bottled water. I got to <laughs> put another order. Tough day at the at Toretto's market. <laughs> we need more Coronas. <laughs> All right, who won the movie? This is tough. It is tough. I don't. I actually, I would say it's Vin Diesel, but you could also talk me into Paul Walker because I love Paul Walker. Paul Walker is beautiful in this movie. It's it's got to be between those two. Close third place finishes Letty, but Great. between Love between Letty. Dom and and Brian, I think I'm gonna go. You know what? Here's my argument. It's Brian. It's Brian over Dom, and here's why: because when they made the remake, I mean, when they made part two, only one guy was in it, and it wasn't Dom. They felt like they could make the franchise without Dominic Toretto in there. Well, I have some info on that that I forgot to put in half-ass internet research. I'll throw it at me. The director and Vin Diesel, instead of doing Fast 2, decided mm-hmm. to do Triple X. Right. They wanted to own the franchise themselves. Sure. I don't know if that was a good career move or not. I have no idea how much they made from Triple X. Kind of like Triple X belongs to a specific era of weird music and kind of video music, games. Music, kind action, of, sports heroes. Yeah, it was kind yeah. of this weird X Games, Grand Theft Auto. It's all in the middle of that. Mm-hmm. Um, not a bad play. Then they they pull him back in for the cameo kind of t- Tokyo the taste. Drift, he doesn't yeah. really come back until four. Right. I actually think Vin Diesel wins the movie and here's why. Okay. Give it to me. I knew who Paul Walker was and I had, I had already in my head, I knew what he was going to be as an actor and as a star, right? He was going to be like basically blonde Keanu Reeves. He was going to get a lot of the same Keanu That's Reeves parts. That's a good call. Um, devastatingly handsome. So I remember handsome. saw Varsity Blues so with my handsome. wife and she's like, I love Lance Harbor. I think we actually saw the skulls in the theater because she liked Paul Walker. I saw it in the so theater So I too. felt like he was something. 
Vin Diesel, I never saw Pitch Black. I had no experience with Vin Diesel. I didn't know who he was. And he was so like, uh, just kind of owned the screen in every scene. You know, it's like, it felt like he had been famous for a while, but he, this is really like his first signature movie. And at the end of the movie, you're like, that guy's a star. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, I can't remember if this came out, this came out before Knock Around Guys, which Koppelman and Levine did, our friends. Okay. And in Knock Around Guys, which I think is actually a really- 500. Movie. Yeah, he does the 500 <laughs> speech. And he's a star in that. And uh-huh. it was like, after that, I was like, Vin Diesel's going to be in my life now for 20 years. This right. is not a fluke. Right. You know, so that's what, that would be the case for him. All right. If I think every everybody wins the movie is, my, is the actual winner of the yeah. movie. Yeah. If you're going to go by like who was just the most overpowering in every scene, it's Dom. He's- He's electric from the first time you see him, from when he turns and looks over his shoulder because he hears the fight in the background. He's just in the the room. Oh, I just thought of another nitpick yeah. or a question. Yeah. Maybe this is an, un, an unanswerable question. What is it? After, after Brian saves Dom, they go back to the house and they're at the party and we get the shot of, of Mia in the room and she realizes that Brian is coming down there, right? She's like, she's studying. She's clearly studying. She's got books open. I think she's maybe even taking some notes. Is she in college? Is she in high school? I think what she's she doing the book for? for Toretto's Market. No, this was like textbooks <laughs> that she's got out. She's studying tuna. I don't know what maybe she's doing. Maybe she's studying restaurant management. It could be that. She's she's doing something though. I, I kind of want to do every Fast Fast and Furious movie now for the rewatchables. We should. You know what's a classic one in Fast Five? Give when it uh, It's either five or six. I think it's five when they're in Brazil. Mm-hmm. And they they have uh they have dinner at Vince's place, mm-hmm. and Jordana Brewster goes and throws up, and then the other lady's like, "How long have you been pregnant?" Yeah, I was like in movies when women know instinctively when other women are pregnant. Uh-huh. I can promise you in real life that's not the case. Okay, my wife has never been like, you know, at a ten person dinner and like, you know, who's pregnant is the one on the far right. <laughs> <laughs> in action movies, they always know how long have you been pregnant. <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts on all the movies. Fast Five, we are doing in April. All right. I don't know if we have to do Fast Four before we do Fast Five, or we could we combine Fast Four and Fast Five? No, they've got to all be separate. You have to do every single movie. That's how I feel because Fast Five is the greatest movie of all time. It's really, really good. People think I'm kidding when I say it's the greatest action movie of all time, but I really think it is. It's up there. It is sure. the most satisfying start to finish action movie that's ever been made. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. That's it's great. unassailable. Every scene in that movie is great. That was the, okay, that's the movie that turns this into like a global empire. It's unbelievable. It's so good. I have one last thing to tell you. Okay. I saw Fast Six at San Antonio. Did you really? Yeah, during, during the finals. The finals? Okay. Went to the theater, one of the comfy theaters with the, you know, when they when they started making those comfy theater with, with the, the comfy seats and the recliners and all that mm-hmm. stuff. Um, saw mm-hmm. like an 11 o'clock showing at San Antonio because we were there for like a week. PM. Okay. It was like 11 PM. And uh, let's just say there were some kids at the theater. Oh, of course. San Antonio, we love it. It was like till 1.30 in the morning. There's probably like 10 kids in the theater, a whole bunch of things. It was exactly the experience I wanted. It was actually, I don't say this lightly, it was the highlight of my trip. And that included- <laughs> that, <laughs> that included, included the finals? <laughs> that included three finals games. <laughs> Fast Six was better because it really felt, I really felt like I was meant to see this movie in this theater with this crazy collection of people uh-huh. that have nothing in common with each other. And we're mm-hmm. all totally into this going nuts. Mm-hmm. It was great. Do you get that big fight when Vin and The Rock are on the same team now? And they're oh, yeah. fighting the other, like- Well, also the 28 mile runway. Yeah, a long Which runway. we'll go into whenever we do the Fast Six rewatch. We'll <laughs> Shay, this was an honor and a pleasure. And I'm glad we did it a quarter mile at a time. Yes. The rewatchables next week- What's next week? Proof of life. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. We're doing proof of life oh, next have week. have fun. This is me and Chris Ryan. Every 15 rewatchables, it's one for us. Uh-huh. And we don't care about the audience. And that's what it that's this what is. This is proof of life. Okay. This one's for us. Yeah. Um, you have a week to watch it. I think it is the most underrated Russell Crowe movie. I think it's one of the great kidnap movies of all time. The only thing I remember about proof of life is there was an is article. how great it was? There was no, it wasn't that. There was an article in GQ, and whoever wrote it made a joke about you're arguing or trying to like come up with a movie you're going to watch with your wife, and you somehow end up with proof of life. And I thought that was the funniest thing. Well, that person can go right to hell. <laughs> proof of life is next week. You have a week week to watch it. Uh, listen to Shay's <laughs> podcast, Villains. 
yes. on the Ringer Podcast Network and listen to all of our awesome podcasts. And we'll be back next week. Bye.